Welcome back to John's Films. As many of you have noticed, I've started attacking new topics as computer hardware is scarce. Today, we look at what makes Wi-Fi 6 so freaking special and why you should care. Before that, please click subscribe below to stick around and grow your technical knowledge one topic at a time. Wi-Fi 6 is the evolution of prior 802.11 standards A, B, G, N, and AC. Formerly known as 802.11AX, Wi-Fi 6 implements a whole host of technologies that enable greater throughput and significantly better multi-client capabilities. What's fascinating to me, all of the Wi-Fi standards use the same base technology to transmit data, electromagnetic waves. More commonly known as radio waves, if you want to learn more about them, I'll have a one minute explanation at the end of this video showing exactly how they work and transmit data. For now, let's take a look at what makes Wi-Fi 6 special. Believe it or not, Wi-Fi 6 is the first standard to simultaneously leverage 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands to transmit data. In fact, 802.11ac, now known as Wi-Fi 5, didn't even leverage the 2.4 band at all. It forced users back to Wi-Fi 4 if 2.4 GHz transmission was necessary. In the graphic, you see the radio bands and standards they operate in and their theoretical maximum throughput. Clearly, Wi-Fi 6 has top-end speed. Next is an innovation known as multi-user MIMO. Many Wi-Fi 5 access points and routers implemented 4x4 multi-user MIMO, which allowed up to four concurrent downloads at a time. Wi-Fi 6 not only specifies eight download streams, but also allows for eight concurrent upload streams from one or multiple clients. While maximum speed would require a client with eight radios, where most only have two, the increase means more clients can connect at once, greatly reducing wait times for transmission of data. In a traditional wireless network, clients send data to the access point over and over and over until their message received and acknowledged. Often their messages collide with other clients on the network and have to be resent. Wi-Fi 6 generates an upload schedule for each client greatly reducing collisions on communications from client to network. Scheduling also lets the clients power off their radio until their scheduled transmission time, thus conserving energy. New in Wi-Fi 6 and leveraged from cell phone communications, commonly known as LTE, OFDMA is Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. OFDMA enables access points to group small messages intended for many different clients into a single transmission across the channel, both in download and upload. It does this by breaking the channel into resource units, which can carry smaller messages to clients without requiring the use of an entire channel. This means the access point can serve more users at a time, increasing efficiency, especially in crowded, low bandwidth situations. Wi-Fi 5 introduced 256 QAM, which is 8-bit modulation in both the phase and frequency of a radio wave at the same time. This allowed the higher top-line data transmission speeds in a perfect wireless environment. Wi-Fi 6 brings 1024 QAM, which is 10 bits in depth and can carry a potential 25% increase in data throughput. As Wi-Fi 6 matures, this is likely a technology more access points will try to push so they can gain more impressive top-line numbers. Radio waves are half-duplex, meaning only one signal can be transmitted on a channel at a time, while OFDMA and other technologies allow for more clients to be serviced in the transmission, often access points get in each other's way, confusing clients and creating collisions with others on the channel. This is why radios on access points are assigned channels for broadcast. However, co-channel interference is a huge issue and access points constantly listen for each other and defer transmission of their packets if another access point starts broadcasting on the same channel first. As you can imagine, in high density networks, a lot of time is spent listening for and then waiting as other access points communicate with their clients. Wi-Fi 6 introduced color markers in the headers of communications to differentiate between access points, and if the color doesn't match its own, the radio may be able to broadcast to clients despite the conflicting channels. This standard is not compatible with prior Wi-Fi versions, and only when more and more access points are converted to Wi-Fi 6 will efficiency gains be evident. Now, the in-depth study of signal modulation I promised. Wi-Fi radio waves are the same technology used in radio and television broadcast, cell phones, marine radio, and even MRI machines. 
Radio waves are pulses of energy that naturally occur in the world. They travel at the speed of light because they are a form of light. Also known as electromagnetic waves, an electromagnetic wave transmits at a frequency of recurrence, measured in Hertz, so named after a German scientist, Heinrich Hertz, who first transmitted the waves in 1886. Astounding the other physicists at the time, Hertz replicated the waves across a wire and then through empty space. With more practice, he and others were able to characterize radio waves in the following ways. Frequency, the number of times per second a signal repeats itself. In Wi-Fi, it's 2.4 billion times a second, 2.4 gigahertz, or 5 billion times a second, 5 gigahertz. Amplitude, the strength of the wave measured as its power. The phase, shifting of a wave from a known marker, often time. The physicists discovered the more power they pushed to a wave, the further it traveled, and different frequencies experienced electromagnetic and physical interference to varying degrees. While it's one thing to discover the natural phenomenon of radio waves, manipulating the waves to carry data is an entirely different matter. It didn't take too long, however. In 1893, Nikola Tesla created the first radio, using technology to modulate or change a known signal to transmit data. To do this, a transmitter first generates a perfect signal at a given frequency. Then it modulates the signal with variations from the base or carrier signal representing the data. The receiver then demodulates the data by calculating the differences from the carrier signal and the data is then reconstructed. Many of the same methods for modulating perfect signals are the same today as they were 100 years ago, namely frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. In frequency modulation, data is encoded in the subtle shift of frequency hundreds of thousands of times per second. Amplitude modulation does the same, but with signal strength. In the modern day, frequency and amplitude modulation has been adapted from analog signal encoding to digital with frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, and phase shift keying, which bounces between two known constants to represent zero or one in binary streams. To carry more data, signals can be modulated by more than one attribute. QAM, mentioned previously, is the modulation of both the frequency and the phase to convey more information at once. Clearly, Wi-Fi 6 is the culmination of several generations of encoding advances and introduces significant new capabilities while still living in the standard 2.4 and 5 GHz radio frequency bands. If I miss something or you have questions, please put them in the comments below. And thanks for watching John's Films. Have a great day.